uh, DNA is the material that contains the genetic or carries out the, the genetic information. And at a very cartoonish level, um, DNA can be represented as very long strings. And what basically happens in our cell is that um, the information in the DNA is eventually converted into a protein, which at the end of the day is responsible for everything we do. However, not every part of the DNA is actively coding for proteins, and it is of great biological importance that we know which part of the DNA is active and which part is not. And one of the um, most obvious way of trying to find the active part is to take the protein sequence that we see and try to predict what sequences gave rise to these prote pro uh, protein sequences. And so our, I think the most uh, obvious machine learning method was to use the hidden Markov model. And we ended up implementing three different kinds of hidden Markov models. The first one is the simple first order HMM where uh, three letters of the DNA sequence is one state and one letter in the protein sequence is a symbol. The second implementation is a variation of the first order where we look at both, the, both state I minus one and symbol I minus one to predict state I. And the third implementation is simply a second order HMM. Here in this table we are trying to compare, uh, we are only showing the results for the first order uh, HMM due to time constraints, we hope to show you the other results during the poster session. Here we are comparing our method secure with easy back teeth and back transect, which are already existing methods. Um, uh, easy back uses HMM implementation but uses a different training set than ours. Teeth uses genetic algorithm and back transect doesn't actually learn the code and sequences from their data set. And now if you focus on the last column of the table, you'll see that most of the time our um, method does better than at least two of the existing methods. And now if you uh, 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 focus on the sequence that's highlighted in red, you'll see that it outperforms all three existing methods. And the, what's different about this sequence is that it's the only sequence in this table that's greater than 500 base pairs long. Actually, it's around 2,000 base pairs. And we have reasons to believe that our method would do better, perform better on longer sequences. Um, we tried using as, as structured as VM2 for the classification, however, um, our, the DNA sequence does not really have much structure to it, and we didn't expect the structured as VM to do very well. And as you can see, the mean accuracy is 42%, and we weren't able to use a lot of training data to train it because the running time just increases exponentially. And, another, and the reason for that was that we were neither able to like uh, define a proper or a meaningful map between the training the uh, between the class labels and the training data. Um, also, at least theoretically, we tried to fit the hidden Markov model to our problem, um, so that in the end, like we could just end up like um, learning three parameters. Uh, however, the problem here we faced was that right now, if we use hidden Markov model as it is. Um, the, it would result in states that were substrings of variable length, for, but to solve our problem, we need uh, substrings that are of mul uh, whose length is multiples of three. So that's what we have.